Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we continued cross-examining Adrian Andrews. She started to plead the fifth, but when we let it slip that something bad was going to happen to Maya, Edgeworth jumped in and thankfully we're getting her to testify a bit more about some other stuff that's not related to what she refuses to testify about. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. That glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Hmm, so you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Glass of juice, didn't really pour it for myself. But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there's a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ah. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Karita? I understand your frustrations about being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, do f go find yourself some evidence. Ugh. And then, what did you see next, witness? And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. Slumped over? Yes, he was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me or did that right there sound a little... odd? When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Then, what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in an anger because he lost the Grand Prix, and then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see. So you didn't think he was dead at all? To be honest, I thought that he just fainted or something. Went to pour me some juice. Thought he fainted. I thought he was asleep at first. But then, the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he'd gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when you went to pour the glass of juice. Yes, he always has a hard time waking up. So Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked over that flower vase. And how did you come to realize that he was in fact dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I sent so I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I I was shocked and staggered backward. And knocked over the flower of it and knocked the flower vase over. So that's what happened. Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now's our best chance yet to kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? That glass of juice, I didn't... Okay, so this one is actually pretty easy. Two, three... When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Really? Because, when you saw him sitting there, you saw this. 
I don't know how you could think that's just like a small faint. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! What is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corita's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that he was dead in there. Uh, um, that's... well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Y your point is... Miss Andrews, your testimony just now was one giant lie. Ugh! And your lie has proven one thing very clearly, that you are the real killer. It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matangard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss... Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt. I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt Ungard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is... Is it... Over? Have we... Have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually the real killer confesses his or her own guilt. Now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt Ungard. OBJECTION! Your Honor. The prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth? What are you... Witness, don't you understand yet? Uh huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matan God will go free, and in his place, you will be the guilty party. Th that's that's a lie. I I don't believe you. What? I I was told if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? She lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca Von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of other... of another. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then... right now... Miss Andrews is... Yesterday she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Madame Guard will be acquitted. Miss... Miss Andrews underlyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging on to them. Then what should we do? This... This is the first time I've ever come across anything like this! But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is... Is get her not guilty. It's my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me, I didn't kill Juan. Help, please, someone, help me. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. The court can't continue on like this, therefore I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? 
Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did, and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who is the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come now! What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? See, it would be very easy to request a not guilty verdict. To say that, you know, she did it, Madangard is innocent, and therefore free Maya. But something is off here. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. M Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you are doing? Sure, Mr. On Guard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? B b be quiet. How dare you? You're... You're trying to trick me! And that's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. Y you're wrong. Such a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this. However... What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. Stop. Mr. Edgeworth? This witness... How should I put this? She has an illness. Uh, what? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop! Please stop! No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Ah! Uh, that's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her codependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you! If people find out... If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. <laughs> Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your breathing lips, no matter what I have to do. <laughs> so, will you tell the court yourself or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please, help me. N nothing matters anymore. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one else in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Stabbed the body? With a knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man? Ooh. What do you mean by all of this? It might take the court a little while to understand, but... <clears throat> this is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corita, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. What? How is that possible? I mean, 
Wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. This is actually a very interesting point here about how previously, to my knowledge, in pretty much every case before this, we go in, our client is being accused, but we look at all of the evidence and we come to the conclusion that one person must have done it, and we go after them and they win. But we're very early in the case here, we did exactly that, and it seems like it's not exactly leading to the right person here. So there's definitely something more to the case here than we've seen so far. Anyways, the solution for this cross-examination is to press everything. But you could tell from the state of the room was in that there might have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He... he had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is a part of the German Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up. And went to pour the juice. So when I realized he was dead, I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan from s and silence him for good. And that's when I thought, I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was, the pl was to plant the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at the dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. He slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. So you were the one to stab the victim with the knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But, at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I use the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it on Mr. Ungod's Hakama? Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready pacing back and forth. That's Miss Oldbag for ya. I'd already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the awards ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. And I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Ungard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Hakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into the bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word. What does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth. Is it? The real criminal is mad on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should under no circumstances confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, that Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... 
I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But, but... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Today's... Today's trial... It's over. I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave the court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked me about this. Although I didn't remember the, at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card is any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Ed Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you've stupidly yet inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you'd hid this from me all this time! I... I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen such an emotional Edgeworth in my entire life. That card... What in the world is it? What does it mean? <laughs>